and first place is on the line here in the NFC South. Mm -hmm. The Atlanta Falcons truly are doing what nobody could have ever expected this season. And with a huge game upcoming against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers in week 14, there is just so much to talk about. And Atlanta is really going to need Desmond Ritter to show up in a big way over the next few weeks in order to take control of what is a very winnable division. And if I would have told you that this team would be in a position to do that before the season started, you probably would have laughed at me. But they for real have a nice young core and the future is super bright. Real fast, before I get into things, I would really appreciate it if you would drop a like and subscribe. It only takes 5 seconds, plus you can always change your mind. We're on the road to 20k subscribers, and with your support, I believe we can get there super fast. Alright, so as I said, this Sunday is more than just a game. It's about taking control of the NFC South. It's a critical moment for both teams because for Atlanta, a win truly would make things tough for the Buccaneers in terms of the playoff race, but if Tampa does win, then this division is completely up for grabs. So basically, it's control your own destiny or fall behind. And I would even go as far as saying that this is must-win territory, even though there still is a good amount of games left at this point in the season. Atlanta is heading into this game with some injuries. Key players like AJ Terrell and Nate Landman are on the injured list, which are both guys who have a pretty big impact on the defense. Also, the Falcons running game was a critical part of their success in their earlier win against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers in week 7. Now as they face them again, the ground game could matter less, especially with right tackle Caleb McGarry also set to miss the game. That absence could force the Falcons to rely more on quarterback Desmond Ritter and their passing attack as the offensive engine that carries them. But the Falcons did run for 156 yards the first time against the Bucks without Bijan Robinson contributing, so now with Robinson in the lineup, they may be able to get a few big runs in. But the addition of having him may not be enough to offset the absence of McGarry, whose replacement at right tackle is Storm Norton, who is nowhere close to being as good of a run blocker. This was fully on display at the end of last week's win against the New York Jets. With roughly 7 minutes to go, the Falcons had a 3 and out on a series trying to run out the clock on 3 consecutive runs to the right side, and on all 3 plays, Norton whiffed on his assignment. The Falcons overall this year have run the ball 109 times to the left side versus 112 times to the right side, according to Pro Football Focus. But despite that balance, the strength of the Falcons run game has been the right side, where McGarry's physicality and right guard Chris Lindstrom's athleticism accentuate one another. On right side runs, the Falcons average 4.9 yards per carry in contrast to the 4.3 yards per carry they average on runs to the left. In short yardage situations, the Falcons show a less balanced attack since they run to the right side at a rate of about 46% higher than runs to the left. In their previous matchup against the Bucks, the Falcons had the bulk of their rushing success running to the outside. On 14 carries designated as outside runs, the Falcons averaged 4.8 yards per carry. On their 18 other carries that were not quarterback runs, they averaged 3.6 yards per carry. Will they be able to repeat that success without McGarry in the lineup? Only time will tell, but I don't think the Falcons should abandon the run in their game plan. But should they struggle to establish it early against Tampa Bay, then as I said, they need their passing game to pick up any slack. And with Atlanta down several starters on defense, this puts even more pressure on the team's passing attack to carry the load since keeping a lid on the Bucks' offense will be a taller order this week. The offense may be forced to win a game that more closely resembles a shootout. This of course puts all the pressure on Ritter to be the driving force or engine behind the offensive success. Fortunately, Ritter had one of his better games this season in their last meeting against Tampa Bay, but he's going to have to do a better job of taking care of the ball because he somehow had three fumbles. And while many outside Atlanta have already declared that Ritter isn't the answer for the Falcons at quarterback beyond this year, the people inside the buildings in Flowery Branch haven't yet made up their minds. But Ritter's performance down the stretch will go a long way to answer any lingering questions or doubts about his future beyond this season. Because if he can lead this team to the playoffs, then you gotta give him another shot. And if they make it there, we all know that anything can happen, even when you don't think there is any possibility. But yeah. I think I've covered enough about the upcoming huge matchup, so now I want to talk about the ugly win over the Jets because as a theme for this season, they just found a way to get the job done. Ritter threw for 121 yards, with 51 of those going to Kyle Pitts, and he also threw the only touchdown of the game. They definitely chose the right day to have this type of performance because the Jets are just so bad, and it's kind of embarrassing how they benched Zach Wilson and then told him he was starting again because of how bad Tim Boyle was. 
As I look ahead in the schedule for Atlanta, they really do have five winnable games coming up against the Bucks, Panthers, Colts, Bears, and then Saints. They are just lucky to be in this division right now, and it's definitely theirs to lose. All they gotta do is win three out of the next five, and they will have a home playoff spot on lock. I really think the future is bright for this franchise, and even with the problems at certain positions, overall, they just have a nice young core that is going to be around for years to come. I just can't wait to see what's going to happen in this upcoming game against the Buccaneers, because as a Browns fan, I of course always got to pull for Baker, and it actually seemed like Tampa Bay was going to have a great season, but they've fallen off a bit. But this is still anyone's division, and Baker is most definitely hungry for it, and I think he's going to be willing to do whatever it takes. So the Falcons are really going to have to lock in, and people are going to have to step up for all the defensive injuries to stop him. Thank you all so much if you made it to this point in the video, and if you enjoyed and haven't yet, make sure to drop a like and subscribe because your support truly means the world. Also, now that we are already at the home stretch of the season, there is just so much to talk about, so let me know what you would like to see next. And until then, I will see you all later.